A few weeks ago, Vice held a panel discussion with young Asian Americans. Um, and here's how they describe the point and theme of the conversation. What does it mean to be Asian in America? From hate crimes to the model minority myth to affirmative action, a politically divisive panel hashes out the most controversial issues facing the AAPI community today. Now, this is the kind of discussion, especially when hosted by an outlet like Vice, that is nearly certain to be excruciatingly boring and annoying. It's already guaranteed that the panel will be stacked with leftists, and leftists are ideologically required to never say anything remotely interesting, especially when the subject has anything to do with race or ethnicity. But fortunately for the viewers, there was at least one young man who managed to make it onto the panel despite having a mind of his own. Uh, a Twitter user named Caleb posted a, a couple of videos featuring this man. Vince is his name. And his contributions to the conversation are, are quite interesting. The clips are revealing and instructive and also kind of hilarious, not because of what Vince says. I mean, what he says is, is, is good and is correct, uh, but there's, there's nothing hilarious about saying something that's true. What makes it funny is because of how the other people on the panel react to him saying those things. So watch this. Assimilation. Is it a good thing? Is it a bad thing? Is, is it a burden? Is it an opportunity? I think assimilation is not just a great thing, it's a necessary thing. Huh. No society can hold together where people have nothing in common, they don't speak the same language, they don't practice the same things. And you know, you may look at something like just food habits or what you eat and think that's fairly frivolous, but the truth of the matter is that on a broader level, when we're talking about more big picture things, differences in race, culture, religion, all these things, the, people have fought wars, violent wars, killed each other over these things for thousands of years, if America is to hold together, assimilation, not just good or bad, necessary. I don't think it's going to be possible for America to survive as a stable functioning society if people don't, to some degree, say, well, here's what we're going to commonly agree upon. But who gets to choose it? The majority culture, I suppose. And what's the people, majority culture? The people with power. And who's people with power? Who's people with power. Stop. White people. Well, I don't, I don't know I'm if that's... I'm going to say it. Yeah. White people. It's okay. I don't know if that's necessarily so true. I mean, Wait, can you, you unpack? At, yeah. I don't, Let's I, don't elaborate. Think, I don't think a particularly white quote unquote interest controls things like in America. pop culture. Do you believe well, white think, supremacy exists? I think there are people who believe in it. I think there's people who all believe that their race is superior. So you don't believe in white but, supremacy? Do you believe America is a white supremacist race? state? No, not at all. And not found No white supremacist state would even like allow us to be doing this. Like, I don't, I don't understand. So, white supremacists, there's just KKK people walking. I mean, Actually, I go around New York City. I notice that, like, I guess Brooklyn a little bit different. Most of the people here are not white and they're doing their thing. So, I don't understand. What does doing their thing mean to you? Going to work. Are they making, working. Them, are they making the same amount of money? I gotta say, I like this Vince guy. I mean, I like him for all the reasons that everyone else on the panel is shocked and horrified by him. First of all, his point about assimilation is obviously correct. A nation must be bound together, united by more than just the simple fact that all of its people exist inside the same geographical boundary. And that's even more the case today when the geographical boundary is so porous and apparently, according to this administration, negotiable. We, we so we have to have something else holding us together. To be a people, not just people, but to be a people, we must have a shared culture, shared values, shared traditions, a shared language. Without those things, you end up with uh, fracturing and division. That leads to violence, and that leads to chaos and dysfunction, all of which we're experiencing today. Of course, everyone else in the room is offended by this notion, mostly because they're conditioned to be offended by it. These are automatons operating based on their programming. That's also why the obnoxious girl in the front row has purple hair. You know, she can't help but become a parody of herself. It's like, why do these... These obnoxious liberal women, they, why, do, why even do the purple hair anymore? You, you're, you're beca you are willingly making yourself into a stereotype, into one of the most mocked stereotypes in existence right now. You are saying, I'm going to be that person. But it's all programming. And she is aghast that Vince would suggest assimilating with the majority culture because she claims the majority culture is white. And she sees white as automatically bad, and she holds this view even while telling herself that she is not the racist one. She, along with her, uh, along with her leftist cohorts, are, are also scandalized that Vince will uh, not label America a white supremacist state. But as he points out, if America was run by violent white supremacists who control everything, the first thing they'd probably do is stop you from pointing this out. Okay? Like, this is a pretty good indication 
So if you want to know, do, you, do, do, do I live in a, in, a, in a white supremacist, violent state? Well, can you stand anywhere? Can you go anywhere and just say, this is a violent white supremacist state and nothing happens to you? Oh, no, no, sorry. It's not nothing happens to you. You can go anywhere and say that and you'll be applauded. Well, if that's the case, then you don't live in a white supremacist state. Because non-white people can say and do whatever they want. And they can condemn white people all they want without any repercussions whatsoever, unless as repercussions you count, again, applause. It's not exactly what you'd expect a white supremacist dystopia to operate. That's not how you expect it to operate. Like if you didn't know anything about this country, if you, you're crawling out of a cave and someone told you, oh, you know, uh, I got some bad news for you. You know, you crawled out of a cave into a white supremacist state. You, 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 just so you know, you live in a, in a systemically racist white supremacist state. When you hear that and you don't know anything, you, it, immediately your mind is going to conjure all kinds of images and you're going to make all kinds of assumptions about what sort of country this is. And then you're going to get out into the world and you're going to find that, wow, it's not anything like that at all. In fact, wow, there's like, there's, there's non-white people all over the place running around talking about how much they hate white people. And then there are other groups of people, there are white people following behind them applauding. Well, that's not the kind of white supremacist state I was expecting. Though I do have to admit, the, the guy at the end was on to something. He asked whether non-whites make the same amount of money as whites. And the answer is no, they don't. That's true. Um, because most of the people in that room, in fact, belong to ethnicities that make more, more money than white people on average. Many Asian immigrants come to this country and quickly find themselves in a higher income bracket than the average white family. The median household income for Asians in general is $100,000. For white households, it's $77,000. This remains perhaps the most inconvenient truth of all inconvenient truths for the race hustlers. Because if America is a systemically racist country, systemically racist against non-whites, how could it possibly be the case that many non-white communities fare better than whites? In fact, Vince, always on the ball, makes this very point later in the discussion. Listen. Statistically, it is true that Asians, right, on average, make more money, it, like in terms of medium, make more money, better test scores, get into better colleges, all that stuff. I think the question is, why is that? And I don't know, model minority, whatever that label wants That's to be. That's actually mean. a myth well, because not, we cannot be. Um, well, no, listen. Well, let me finish my point. We need to observe what makes people successful and unsuccessful. And I think when you look at trends that are generally true in the Asian community, not of everyone, but are generally true, usually you have families that are sticking together. You have, um, you know, people are taught to work hard in school, not get into trouble. I think that translates to why Asians on mass are successful. And I don't think you have to be Asian or white for that matter to not have kids out of wedlock, not, you know, commit crime, what? not not cause trouble, what whatever happening? it is. It's just a matter of like, well, common sense. That's what makes people successful. And if that's so-called assimilation, having a nuclear family, buying a house, going to school, whatever it is, then yeah, okay, call me a pro-assimilation then. I think there's a difference between assimilation and erasure. Yes. Now, needless to say, Vince is once again completely and irrefutably right. Asian Americans do very well in this country. They also tend to have intact families. This is not a coincidence. In fact, if you look at a ranking of median household income by race, and then you look at a ranking of divorce rate by race and out of wedlock birth by race, the lists are identical, okay? The groups that are less likely to get divorced, less likely to have out of, out of, out of wedlock births are also less likely to be poor. As the rates of broken homes increase, the rates of poverty increase between whites, blacks, Hispanics, and Asians. The black community is the poorest. It's also the community with the most out of wedlock births and broken homes. The statistics here, again, are irrefutable. The only crime that Vince committed was noticing it. And as we've seen time and time again, one of the great moral crimes in our culture today, one of the only moral crimes, is the crime of noticing. Like, we all know that black people as a group generally fare the worst by every societal measure, pretty much. We also know that as a group, they have the highest rates of single-parent households and kids raised with, with, uh, without stable and reliable parental guidance. We all know all of that, but, but these are facts we're supposed to keep on the peripheral. You're not allowed to turn your head slightly to the side and look directly at them. And if you do look at them, you certainly are not permitted to draw any connections or form any conclusions. And if you do look at the facts and you form conclusions, they certainly better not be conclusions that would, even to the slightest extent, 
put the onus on the black community to improve its own situation. Okay, you better not be implying or suggesting or, or God forbid, outright saying that the black community can do certain things itself to improve its own position. Like, for example, have kids get, get married before you have kids and then stay married. Like, you're not allowed to ever say that, though I just did. That's the greatest heresy of all. Of course, the other people in the room reacted as you would expect those in a religious cult to react to heresy. If you're only listening to the audio, you're not going to be able to fully appreciate the scene because as Vince calmly explains, the benefits of having intact families and discipline and, you know, and, and encouraging education, the other panelists, were, they were left slack-jawed. You know, they, they, they stared in horror, their mouths agape. They shook their heads. They could not believe what they were hearing. They were in close proximity with common sense perhaps for the first time in their lives, and they found that the experience was, was terrifying. That, to me, as always, is the most disturbing thing. Yes, obviously, Vince is right about everything he said. Obviously, the other panelists are wrong, but it's not just that they're wrong, okay? You can be wrong about stuff. It's just that they, they it's, and it's not just that they, they don't agree with Vince's common sense data-backed analysis of the situation. It's really that they, it's, it's that they were shocked by the analysis. Okay, it's one thing to be wrong, to misinterpret it, to misread it but you're shocked by it. It's that they apparently had never heard anything like it before. It's one thing to disagree with an obvious truth. It's another to be stunned by it. And that speaks to the suffocating, stifling bubble that these people have been living in. They clearly believe uh, what they believe merely because it's the only belief that was ever presented to them and they lack the intellectual curiosity to survey the other options. They have nearly totally insulated themselves from everything that might challenge their worldview. So when it does happen, and they finally and by accident encounter such a challenge, they practically faint like damsels in distress. And that's what we saw there. And it's why Vince is not canceled today. In fact, I just found out as I was preparing the segment that Vince has his own YouTube channel, which uh, you can find if you search Vince Dow, D-A-O, on uh, YouTube, and you should look him up. He's obviously a brilliant guy. Uh, the same cannot be said for the others in the room, and that is why they are today canceled. That'll do it for the show today as we move over to the uh, members block. You can become a member and use code Walsh to check out for two months free on all annual plans. Hope to see you there. If not, talk to you on Monday. Godspeed.